The debate around the applicability of the anti-boycott, divestment and sanction law legislated and amended in 2017 keeps haunting Israel. The law prohibits entry to Israel to any activist of the pro-BDS movement. But here, this is a very special case, because contrary to Ilan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, who were prohibited to enter Israel, Omar Shakir has lawfully been working in Israel for the past three years. His visa, his working visa, was not renewed by the internal interior ministry ministry because they argue he supports the BDS movement. Yet the debate during the court proceedings evolved essentially around what constitutes the definition of boycott. Was there a sufficient proof to show that Omar Shakir is a BDS activist? I think for that the court really has more than enough information, more than enough evidence from Shakir's own words himself on his Twitter account, on his Facebook account, in everything that he says, he supports BDS. Other defenders of Israel and anti-BDS activists who are in favor of Shakir's expulsion argue that BDS amounts to the delegitimacy of Israel. Omar Shakir was hired by Human Rights Watch to do BDS to demonize Israel, that's what he's been doing all of his professional life. What he's been doing here has not been human rights. It's been demonizing Israel. There's lots of evidence about it. Omar Shakir himself denies any involvement in the BDS movement. Human Rights Watch has never called for a boycott of Israel. Fundamentally, this case is not about me. It's not even about muzzling Human Rights Watch. It is fundamentally trying to delegitimize advocacy for Palestinian rights to make it different from human rights advocacy anywhere else in the world. But this debate is touching a raw nerve within Israel society itself. Whether Israel, by fighting representatives of human rights organizations, risk downgrading the character, the democratic character of the state of Israel. This is Pierre Kloschendler at Israel's Supreme Court, I-24 News, Jerusalem.